Way back in 2018, we got a film called The Nun that was technically a smash hit by box office standards. It made a lot of money. This film came from the Conjuring universe. And, you know, I really liked the idea of Valak, this mysterious evil nun. And uh, I thought there was some pr promise there. However, the, the first Nun film really just left me wanting a lot more to be desired. It was kind of more... Adventure was a lot of jump scares. They really rely heavily on the jump scares. I really still dig Valak, and I think she's really effective in The Conjuring too. However, with the Nun film in 2018, it became not so great for me. I am kind of hit or miss on The Conjuring universe. I really dig the first two Conjuring films, and I like Curse of La Llorona a lot more than most, probably. But the Annabelle movies other than Annabelle Creation, mind you. That's probably the best spin-off film, Annabelle Creation. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not really I'm not too fond of the Annabelle franchise other than, like I said, Creation. But The Nun 2 comes out. Michael Chavez returns in the director's chair. He uh, since has done a couple films in this franchise, Curse of La Llorona, like I spoke of before, and The Conjuring 3, which came out, I believe, a couple years ago on HBO Max. Let's take it as a will. But The, the, the Nun 2 uh, didn't really have any really interest to go and watch it but my wife really was insistent and in going to check it out and of course we go to the theater sat down i was like okay well, we're going to take this with a grain of salt it's going to be kind of a cheesy horror film but pleasantly i was surprised is it perfect no we'll talk about that is it effective for what it is i think so and if you enjoy these kind of early sep october late september horror films you may dig this one, too. Uh, let's dig into The Nun 2. Like I said before, it is directed by Michael Chavez, and it's written by Ian Goldberg, Richard Nanging, and Akella Cooper. And surprisingly, it does have a really decent cast with some familiar faces there. It does have Taisha Farmiga, who reprises her, her role from The Nun in 2018 as Irene. Funny enough, I just found out that she's the younger, much younger sister of Farrah Farmiga, who's also in the Conjuring universe. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, Storm Reed shows up. I saw her in Missing this earlier this year, and she was uh, pretty decent in this movie. Uh, Anna Popowell, who is kind of mostly known from the Chronicles of Narnia franchise. And Caitlin Rose Downey also appears in this film. There's several other actors there as well. The movie does take place in 1956 France, and we start off with a bang here. We do see our first big kill from Valak in the beginning of the movie. Her presence is kind of thrust into the movie quite free, uh, quite fast. However, we do see this kind of brutal kill of this priest in front of a young child who uh, is also, he does like the communion there as well. So he's part of the um, Catholic church there. And then it becomes kind of like a murder mystery. We are introduced back to Irene, who is played by a uh, young Taisha Farmiga. And also we get introduced to Deborah, who is Storm Reed's character. Now Storm Reed, I reckon that picked up her quite uh, fast here. And it's interesting how she gets into this store because she's clearly American. This takes place in France. It's interesting to see her kind of dynamic here. I think she's kind of, for me anyway, it's it, it's weird to see her in this movie because she's such a, to me, it was a recognizable face. I just saw her in a movie earlier this year called Missing. And uh, having her in the movie kind of took, took me out of it, of a, this, this film, a little bit because it's, like I said, a recognizable face in a very, fairly unrecognizable uh, casting list. You may pick up some people on the way like... Uh, Anna Popowell, who was in the Narnia series, like I said, or and you, of course, recognize Farmiga here as well. But anyway, uh, Storm Reed's character here is Deborah, and she is uh, an American who got put, put in the Catholic Church here after her brothers got drafted for the war. Uh, it's it's interesting to see the dynamic with Irene and Deborah here. Uh, obviously, I, Deborah's kind of like always smoking a cigarette in this movie, so she's kind of the rebellious nun in this film, and I, Irene is kind of has some damage to her from the incident that happened in 2018's The Nun. Uh, of course, the Catholic Church uh, kind of thrusts Irene into this mystery, basically saying that you survived the events of 2018's Nun, and we need you to kind of go solve and see where this evil presence is lurking, because there's been several murders leading up to uh, the, these events of the film here. And of course, as we dig deeper into the movie, there is some kind of uh, Catholic pr presence here with... Uh, this uh, one um, one patron saint here who is known for uh, 
blind, her blindness because she got her eyes plucked out of her head type of thing. And is there a, is there a connection to our main character? We will only find out. Maybe that's a, maybe teasing something there. Uh, but we do see some really beautiful set pieces here. And I love this, the, but the art direction here, because there are some really awesome eerie places that this movie does go way better than the 2018 film, I think. And I think everything about the movie is far superior to the 2018 version. And I'm going to probably be saying that quite a bit because I, I just didn't like that version. It was, they relied on a lot of uh, jump scares and special effects stuff, especially when it came to Valak. And you, while you do get some of that here, it doesn't rely so much on the jump scares that I didn't really, wasn't really scared, but I was really enjoying where the story was going like I said, it's not perfect by any means because there are some characters that do some really dumb things like the young child actress who plays the character of Sophie, which was Caitlin Rose Downey. She is not the greatest actress here, unfortunately, but she is a child actress, but she does do a decent job. But there's these three girls that are really kind of a bullying her here and no one really defends her at all, which other than this one guy named Maurice and we'll dig into him in a little bit, but the bullies are kind of really, really unlikable, kind of more punchable faces in this film. And it's interesting to see like how they just get away with things and no, no attribution really is on them at all. They're like, Hey, don't do that type of stuff. So that, that was kind of annoying. And some of the decisions that uh, happened with those characters really just kind of head scratching. And they really don't have any like karmuppins at all. Uh, that happened to them so other than like they kind of get scared a little bit too however uh taisha farmiga is really good in this movie she is actually really surprising and maybe maybe cracking my top 10 for one of my favorite performances uh, for a leading actress in this movie i think she's really underrated and for being the farmiga name i really dig farmiga uh, vera farmiga's acting and taisha is really up there as well um, I do think some of the uh, formulaic elements of the Conjuring franchise are there. However, this is definitely a bright spot in the universe because, like I said, the, the franchise as a whole is kind of uh, not a really great franchise. I can only really recommend three movies out of the franchise. I I believe there's three Annabelle films. Now there's two Nun films. There's three Conjuring movies. La Llorona. So there's nine movies in this franchise here. And I only can say that I really kind of recommend and give positive ratings to three of them. However, the none two is something I can also recommend, even though it's not being probably not going to be a positive rating overall on the star rating scale. But it's one that I think that does everything. It builds off what the, the first none did do and kind of expanded it on it a lot. Uh, there may be some repetition in kind of the story, what beats and everything, but it does uh, bring some new things to it and some new a mythology to the conjuring franchise. The things I really don't care about this movie is that they do build up that tension and they do try to hit you sometimes with those jump scares. And while they may work, it's simply the loud noise that makes you jump out of the seat. It's not really the tension that the film builds every single time. I really don't like that. Also the character of Maurice, uh, who was also in the first movie, mind you, uh, there are some things with that character that you kind of can pick up quite frequent, uh, quite early on in the movie that where you can, you can kind of tell where the movie does go with that character. And so that could, could turn you off too. Uh, but overall, if we're comparing the movie to the other films, I, I really am positive, more positive sounding on this one, but I'm really my rating of the movie is based on where it really falls in the overall scope of the Conjuring universe. I think this one is uh, fun to go watch if you hit the matinee or just wait till it hits streaming. I think that's probably the sweet spot is wait till you hit streaming. It should be coming on streaming at some point soon where you can watch it at home um, and enjoy the experience. Uh, one kind of nitpick that's not really about the movie at all is that Regal uh, Theaters has, you know, pick your seat and you reserve that seat. So I get there and I we got there like right when the credits were kind of not the credits, but the uh, uh, previews were playing. So near the end of the previews and I, I there's only like maybe ten, eight people in the theater at the time. And I saw where we sat was in the middle row of the first row, right past the, right above the handicap spots. Right. Perfect kind of great seats for me and my wife. And there was nobody in that row at all. I get there and there's people sitting right next to the seats. Uh, we were sitting in. So what did I do? I just decided to sit right next to the guy. My wife said to scoot over at least one. 
But again, if you don't get the seats, don't sit somewhere you're not supposed to. Uh, yeah, that that's that's always kind of a nitpick thing for me. But it's different. If it, we weren't pay, picking our seats, then sit wherever you want. But I don't know. Uh, I hope they enjoyed the movie. I know they, uh, you know, there was things they were kind of chuckling about. And there's some stuff here that character decisions that I did chuckle about as well. Overall, I'm kind of two and a half stars, and that might be a lot better. However, I did give a movie Talk to Me two and a half stars, and I would rather watch The Nun 2 over that movie. So that's kind of my justification where I kind of rank uh, Talk to Me and The Nun 2. It, Nun 2 is right here. Talk to Me is right underneath it. Uh, I just liked The Nun 2 a little bit better, and I think it's probably because Taisha Farmiga, some of the art direction here, and actually Michael Chavez. I didn't talk about this. Michael Chavez's direction is better than he's done in the other two, uh, Conjuring, The Conjuring 3 and Curse of La Llorona as well. Actually, I take that back. I didn't count La Llorona. So there's 10 movies in this franchise, and I kind of recommend only four or five of them. So I'll be almost like under 50% of the movies are actually, I think, good in this franchise. So anyway, uh, Michael Chavez, I hope you keep directing some interesting movies. I think you are learning every time outing, and I think this is by far your best direction. I think there's some really good elements you can learn, uh, take away from this franchise here, or from this film, rather, and bring it on to another movie, hopefully a different franchise. Get out of this franchise, I think. That's that's a, that's a good point there. Anyway, I saw my quick takes on the nun Two, the 10th movie in the conjuring franchise i believe it's 10 films if it's not let me know in the comment section down below and what do you guys think of the nun Two? would love to hear about those in the comments anyway thank you guys so much for watching my name is adam you go watch some horror movies this october see you later